finding a mortal maiden. So well did Benny carry out the scarecrow's instruction, the flimsy straw man was jerked from the ground and fairly flew through the air at the stone man's side. And so intent were they both upon their running, they never saw the little girl in the pink dress until they had bumped right into her. Now to be run into was upsetting under any circumstances, but to be run into by a live statue is the most upsetting thing yet. Trot, for it was Trot, not only was upset but rolled over and over and bumped her head on an emerald milestone at the side of the road. Stop, cried the scarecrow, recognizing her at once. Now see what you've done. But the bird, quavered Benny coming to a reluctant halt and glancing fearfully over his shoulder. With an impatient exclamation the scarecrow dropped his hand and hurried over to Trot. Fancy, running into you like this, he puffed ruefully. Fancy it, gasped Trot rubbing her head with one hand and her knee with the other, I don't fancy it at all. Why don't you look where you're going? She frowned crossly at the scarecrow and then catching a glimpse of Benny jumped to her feet in real alarm. Who's he? she asked in a frightened whisper. Just now he's a public benefactor, but he's trying to be a real person, explained the scarecrow hastily. Benny, old fellow, this is Trot, a little girl from California who was shipwrecked and came to the land of Oz. She lives in the royal palace with Ozma. Benny comes from America too, he added proudly. This is Trot. But the bird, panted Benny, nodding absently to Trot. You see, my dear, we were escaping from a horribless bird when we ran across you, apologized the scarecrow with an anxious glance upward. I don't see any bird. Still rubbing her knee, Trot looked up too and after they had all gazed intently at the sky for several minutes they had to admit that Trot was right. There was not even a speck in the bright blue expanse overhead. But there was a bird, a most fearful, queerful bird, the scarecrow assured her positively. Trot gave a little sniff and while she did not exactly say so, both Benny and the scarecrow felt that she did not believe there had been any bird at all. I was coming to see you, continued the scarecrow in a slightly embarrassed voice. How fortunate that we met this way, now we can all go to the Emerald City together. Trot, looking down at her skinned knee and feeling the lump on her forehead, could not help thinking it had not been so fortunate for her, but being a really sweet-tempered little girl she said nothing further and walked along quietly between these two singular-looking gentlemen. The scarecrow she had known for years, but she kept stealing inquisitive glances at his solemn stone companion. Seeing her evident interest, the straw man told her all about Benny's strange coming to life and his fall into Oz. Do you think I can ever be a real person? asked Benny wistfully as the scarecrow finished his story. Now, as you see, I am a hard person of stone. But I wish to be like other people, to laugh, to sing, to dance and be happy. It was hard to imagine this pompous-looking image singing and dancing, but Trot had seen stranger things than this happen in the marvelous land of Oz, so, stifling her misgivings, smiled at him kindly. You'll have to be a little careful about dancing, she cautioned gently, not to step on anyone's foot, or hold them too tightly or... Ho ho, roared the scarecrow. I should say you had better be careful. One step from your stone toes, and one squeeze from those stone arms would finish any partner brave enough to waltz round with you. At this the stone man looked so downcast that Trot felt really sorry for him. I guess stone arms and legs are not much use, he sighed, rolling his eyes sadly at the little girl. But they're terribly strong, Trot reminded him cheerfully, and would be fine in a battle. And after a while, when you're quite used to being alive, I wouldn't mind dancing with you, finished Trot in a little burst of generosity. Wouldn't you? Stopping stock still, Benny began to bow. My dear, exclaimed the stone man gratefully, and bending so low he almost lost his balance, those are the kindest words I've heard since I came to life into Oz. 
Trot, pleased and delighted at such appreciation, curtsied back. Hurrah, shouted the scarecrow, tossing his hat into the air. You're acting realer every minute. Do you know, this reminds me of my first journey to the Emerald City? I was not always the accomplished person you see before you, he confided mysteriously. For a long time Benny had been trying to puzzle out just what kind of a person the scarecrow was. Never in his whole park experience had he seen anyone so curiously constructed, so unsteady and flimsy, yet so gaily alive. He listened attentively therefore as the straw man began to tell his story to his new friend. I am a scarecrow, he began impressively, and I must admit he was as fond of talking about himself as most of the gentlemen of my own acquaintance. Trot who had heard the story many times began to hum a little tune and to think of something else. Originally, continued the scarecrow brightly, I was intended to scare away the crows from a farmer's cornfield. My head is a small stuffed sack on which the features are neatly painted. This blue suit and these red boots and cotton gloves belong to the farmer, also this hat. Having assembled me in this more or less careless fashion and stuffed me with hay, he hung me upon a tall pole in the cornfield and went about his planting. For a long time I hung around, not knowing how interesting life could be. Then, one day, the scarecrow paused and waved his arms dramatically, along came Dorothy, a little girl about the size of Trot. She had been blown from Kansas by a cyclone and was on her way to the Emerald City to ask the Wizard of Oz to send her back home. Well, to make a long story short, Dorothy lifted me from my pole and I found I could walk and talk almost as fast as she could. But while I was alive, I realized that I could never be a really important person with a head full of hay. So I decided to go to the Emerald City with Dorothy and ask the Wizard of Oz to give me some brains. Well, did he? Benny looked curiously at the scarecrow's bulging forehead. Haven't you noticed them? demanded the scarecrow in a vexed voice. Removing his hat he tapped the top of his head proudly. And here are the finest and most magic brains in Oz, he announced seriously. Not only did they help me to become an emperor, but they have since solved many questions of state for our present ruler, Ozma of Oz. I can think of anything, can't I, Trot? The little girl nodded politely and Benny, much impressed, watched the scarecrow put on his hat. I have a castle of my own in the Winky Country but spend most of my time in the Emerald City, he concluded proudly. Did the wizard send Dorothy back to America? asked Benny, as the scarecrow stopped to pick a green rose for Trot. Certainly, answered the scarecrow, pulling two thorns from his cotton thumb, but she is in Oz again. No one who has lived in Oz can stay away long. Dorothy lives in the castle with Ozma, Betsy, and Trot. Betsy Bobbin is another little girl from America, so you see you'll have lots of company, old fellow. Princess Dorothy Does the wizard live there, too? questioned Benny eagerly, as the scarecrow clumsily presented the rose to Trot, and do you think he could change me to a real person? Of course, but if I were you, I should stay as you are. There are lots of real people but precious few stone ones. Think of the advantages. Tapping Benny lightly on the chest the scarecrow began to enumerate them. First of all, he explained merrily, you will never tire, need food or suffer pain. You will never wear out nor require clothes. Why, you have all the advantages of life without any of its inconveniences. Isn't that true, Trot? Trot smiled and made a gesture that might have been yes or no. It would have taken a wiser person than Trot to settle a question like the Scarecrows. They were drawing nearer to the Emerald City every moment now. Over the treetops ahead, Benny could see the tall towers and flashing spires of the castle. The air was fresh, fragrant, and somehow exciting. 
On each side of the yellow brick road, cozy green cottages with domed emerald roofs began to appear. Friendly-faced folk, in stiff green silk costumes, waved to them from the doorways. Trot and the Scarecrow waved back, and Benny, taking off his hat and bowing stiffly from time to time, decided that he was going to find life in the land of Oz extremely pleasant and interesting. At Trot's suggestion they turned off the yellow brick highway to take a shortcut to the castle. Well, laughed Trot, dancing along through the pleasant little wood, we'll soon be in the Emerald City now, and then, and then. Then what, wheezed the scarecrow, stopping to swing on a low branch. Why, then we'll have a party, exclaimed Trot. Don't we always have a party when you come to the castle? but this party will be for Benny, in honor of his coming to life. The stone man was not sure just what a party was, but so long as Trot was in it he knew everything would be all right. We'll have games, continued the little girl happily, and music and riddles and refreshments, and... Stop, roared an imperious voice in Trot's ear. Now then, will you come along peaceably or must I use force? At this sudden horrid interruption, Benny and the Scarecrow swung round in perfect astonishment. A hagoblin, faltered Trot, catching wildly at Benny. Run! Run! That awful bird, panted the Scarecrow, taking a great leap forward. Run if you want to, rumbled the public benefactor stopping short. But as I am not a real person... I shall stay here and fight. Get away from here, you wild wankus. Leave Trot alone, you old wally buster. Words that he had never known were in his head came tumbling from Benny's stone lips and brandishing his umbrella threateningly he stepped between the little girl and the great ugly birdman. But Akbad, for of course it was Akbad, paid no attention to Benny's expostulations. He was looking earnestly at the picture he had torn from his history of Oz. All night the magic wings had carried him steadily toward the capital and it was Akbad who had scared the two travelers. After frightening them to his heart's content, he had alighted in a small orchard to refresh himself with a few peaches. When he flew on again the wings had carried him straight after Trot and her companions. Looking down and seeing a little girl with them this time, he had immediately dropped to earth. You'll do, you're one of them, shrilled the soothsayer waving the picture triumphantly. Come on, there's no time to lose. Before either Benny or the Scarecrow realized what was happening, Akbad seized the little girl and spread his great golden wings. Stop, yelled the Scarecrow, running back and catching Trot by the hand. Stop, gritted Benny, making a wild snatch for the soothsayer's heels. As Benny's stone fingers closed around his ankles Akbad soared into the air. You would have thought the great weight of the stone man would have held him down. But what are a thousand pounds to a pair of magic wings? Up and away, over the sparkling spires of the capital circle Akbad, paying no more attention to Benny than to a feather and scarcely noticing the scarecrow at all. Take us to the Osier Isles, he commanded, tightening his grasp on Trot's arm.